Um, you've said diving with sharks is just one of the most thrilling experiences one can have. There are probably a lot of people who don't quite understand that. Do you want to explain it to us? There's a lot of people that look at me like I have two heads when I say that. Your because mother might be one of them. No, maybe, she, she's with me. She's, she's, she's with me okay. on this one. She's down with uh, it. You know, right. I think, you know, there's this, there's this perception of sharks in, in the media. That they want to eat us. That, they, that they're these monster man-eating yeah. killers. Um, well, there's some, there's some history there. Well, there is a little bit of history there, and uh, but you know, we people die from bees and hippos and elephants and all sorts of other stuff. But you jump in the water to be with them. I do because, and and I've talked to a lot of people that have been diving with sharks, and just just so people understand, there were about 72 shark attacks last year, and only one of them was fatal. Well, uh, it's typically a case of, of mistaken identity. But we've already had one this winter. One this year, mm -hmm. though dubious as to whether or not who's at fault there. But I think that. Um, you know, if you go kind of putting some, well, yeah. some, some to a lion on the safari, you know, on safari, I'm you might, bait, you might also have an attack. And, and well, how do you learn situation. to swim with sharks? Well, I think it's, you know, for a lot of people, there's different ways to do it. You do free swim with them or you're in cages. But I've talked to a lot of people that have been with sharks and been terrified of the idea. And I've been diving with a few people that have never been diving with sharks before. And you are overwhelmed by their grace and beauty when you're underwater. And everyone I've talked to, even the most scaredy cats of them all, mm -hmm lost that fear Well, the first time you did it, were you free diving or in a cage? I was just diving. I was just out. And who, who, who told you? What, what were you told? I was in, well, I mean, I, again, grown up with stories about sharks and mm -hmm. not instilled with the fear of them, mm -hmm. um, which is totally unfounded. I, I was in Papua New Guinea and actually asked where the sharks would be. And he said, you know, the, the, the current side of the coral reef. And I went looking for them, and I found a reef shark. It just swam with it for, okay. you know, half an hour. So your first shark wasn't a great white. No, it wasn't a great white. Great whites, I probably tend to go in a cage. I did, and uh, <laughs> probably keep it that way. We're happy just, <laughs> I mean, again, you know, not even a majority of the attacks that occur are great white attacks. Right, um, but still. Again, it's usually in cloudy water at dusk or at dawn, mm -hmm. um, thrashing in the water, jumping around, screaming, having a good time, or kicking, or finning on a surfboard and the reason most of them don't occur as, as fatalities is because the shark comes and bites and goes oh, wait a second that's not right and they let go and when it usually usually it's fatality it's not like they've eaten the whole body it's usually some sort of unfortunate artery, artery or something has been nicked yeah. and, and the person dies but it's not a case of the shark coming to eat them <laughs> um, it's not what happens. They don't they, well, you know, kind of keep nibbling away until there's no well, nobody well, left. <laughs> what was your first great white? Where were you? I was. That was when we were filming the show um, with Steve Irwin in Ocean's Australia. Ocean's deadliest. Ocean's right. deadliest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in the uh, on the Neptune Islands, just a few hours, about seven hours boat ride south of uh, Australia, mm -hmm. uh, kind of in the middle of the Southern great, Ocean. Is this the Great Barrier Reef? Or no, this Great Barrier south? Reef is all up in the there, north so of, of Australia. South. So this is all kind of way down in the south, mm -hmm. southern tip of Australia, and we were diving uh, in a cage with, with. There were about a half a dozen great whites with us all day. And again, being underwater, I was struck by how thoughtful they were. I mean, they didn't just come up and gnaw and everything. They would swim along. You They're could see their eyes watching getting you and they'd used look to this at you. By now, they, right? they were swimming around and they were coming up and they mm -hmm. were checking you out and they were just curious. How big were they? Uh, I think the biggest was 17 feet. Yeah. 17, nice. 18 feet. I was more afraid of uh, saltwater crocodiles than I was of great white sharks by far. Because they're... Those are nasty. Unpredictable. They're very unpredictable. They will eat anything. And the big ones are just pretty. pretty well, nasty. when you were just in the Bahamas, you had experience with li was it lionfish? Yeah. And you found them very scary. Yeah, I mean, they are scary because I mean, not. In and you find them invasive too. Well, you they're, don't they're, think they should be there. No, they're a Pacific species that were introduced. Mm -hmm. We think through a hurricane that flooded a, an aquarium in southern Florida That's about ten years ago. And uh, they're they're so they're invasive species. They don't belong in the Atlantic, and they're voracious predators. And mm -hmm. they have their their. Some of their dorsal spines, pectoral uh, spines, are poisonous, very venomous if you touch them. But it's a defense mechanism. It's for being. But you on could be, time. you could be just Joe Tourist swimming in the Bahamian waters, and it looks like just a lump of mud or a rock. Well, they're a little more colorful than a stonefish, um, which they're related oh, to. Oh, was that was that the stonefish? Yes, I that's was a stonefish. Yeah, okay. probably. But, but you didn't like the stonefish either. No, those are very venomous. Those again, if you touch, if you kind of get involved with those. But uh, the point of the stonefish, we were in the Pacific. They belong there. Okay. They're part of a balanced ecosystem. But the they'll still kill you. Come to the Bahamas. They won't yeah, kill you. They won't kill you. Agony for a long time. Okay. Um, a little worse than a sea urchin. Well, way worse. Than, <laughs> I've been stuck by sea urchins many times in my life, unfortunately. Um, sea urchins are nothing compared to stonefish. I mean, there are stories of 
fishermen throwing themselves overboard back in the day when they'd be pulling their nets up and pulling these fish out, the fish they didn't the want. Stone and they'd stone fish. Them, uh, yeah. Um, you know. Sting themselves, mm -hmm. and they'd be in such agony for for days. They just throw themselves over. Is the is the treatment for um, a sea urchin what legend has it to be? One's own urine. No, that is a. Uh, uh, That's an old sailor's tale. That is an tale. old old seaman's tale. That doesn't work actually. Um, hot hot <laughs> you hot found water. Out. Hot hot. No, hot. thank God I didn't get some of my stone fish. I would have. No, that would have been uh, very bad. It's one of those apparently poisons that you have like. Um, flashbacks of the pain every uh -huh. few years, like it comes back to you, like you're, all of a sudden your hand will be in a, you know, a year later and you don't know why and it's in the same spine. Oh, God. It's really nasty, but uh, it's a defense mechanism for mm -hmm. them. But uh, no, it's, it's very, very, very hot water, as hot as you can stand it. Same as a, a, as a stingray or any of the kind of those, those uh, stings in the water. As hot as you can stand it, it will reduce the pain or eliminate the pain while it's in the water. As soon as you take it out, it comes back. And then it just wears off after a couple days. And of all the sea creatures that you've come in contact with, you think that the, that the sea crocodile is the scariest? Or is there the, the something saltwater crocodiles are, saltwater are the nastiest, crocodiles? that's for sure. And we don't uh, have them around here, do we? No, they're only in northern, northern Australia and a few in uh, Florida, but not many left because we're destroying the Everglades. So they're just pretty... what, what, what is your... What, have you found your favorite ocean? There, you know, everywhere is different, just like every land space is different. I mean, you know, you can go to a rainforest, it's just spectacular, or a desert can be spectacular. Right. So, I mean, I've been to places in the Caribbean and been to, you but know, But no, seriously, your, your favorite. Honestly, I, I, I mean, your it depends best, on what you want. Your best ocean moment? It depends on what you want. Again, it, it you there know, the best so ocean many? moment on a coral reef is, is the South Pacific, without mm -hmm. a question. The best moment that you can you can be underwater to dive on a wreck mm -hmm. is probably down in the Bahamas in, in the you know in the Atlantic or in Truck Lagoon or some of the World War II wrecks in the Pacific. Right. Um, the you know and the most amazing experience I guess maybe I'll, I'll I'll okay I'll go I'll go with this the most amazing experience was Great White Sharks was great. great that that in, that in, uh, and that had nothing to do with what the beach looked like. No, there was there was no beach nearby either, so uh, we were kind of out in the middle of. And, of and you've got other sports you like. I mean, I don't consider this a sport. What you do, but you you actually you have other things you do on land. You you like to snowboard. Is that was? Yeah, I mean, when I can, I mean, uh, um, I am very lucky. I get to go scuba diving all the time. You like danger? For many people, they're dreams. But I do like speed. You like and, speed. And um, I like you know I used to windsurf a lot. Uh, I love you snowboarding. You drive cars love too snowboard. fast. I don't drive. I don't even have a car. I don't okay. drive cars. Public transportation in D.C. is great. Everybody. Well, there's always the Potomac River. <laughs> the metro is just fine. Um, so I I, uh, I I got rid of my car when I came. Don't here. eat seafood, but you like a good steak. So you're, you're, I do. you're not. I do. As long as it's grass-fed, small farm for your. Oh, okay, yeah. so you do you do have your you do have your limits, um, your your rules. Um, I do want to talk for a moment about Steve Irwin. Um, it, it struck me for, for you as and as as. As everybody may or may not know, you were working with Steve Irwin on a on a documentary, "The Ocean's Deadliest," when he was killed in a freak accident when the barb of a stingray went into his heart. It was your first time working together. You, it's not like you were old friends or anything. So this was a marvelous union. It must I can just see the men in the network offices going, "Cousteau and Irwin, this is you know fabulous." But um, uh, you you were not. He was in the water, and you were on another part of the boat when it happened. Mm -hmm. But but you were with him. But you, here you had lost your father at a very young age, and to deal with the emotions of this, it must have been. What was it like for you? 